Episode 176 of the Love and Lebanon podcast has a little bit of everything. Shane Connor from ATEC Electrical Contractors joins us. They do a lot of work with the NFL and in the auto racing world too. In this episode, we cover where Shane's business began, why he's expanding into the former Bottoms Up establishment, and what it was like to buy Joe Montana breakfast. Also, why I'm playing this Indiana Jones clip. Snakes. Why did it have to be snakes? Episode 176 of the Love and Lebanon podcast starts now. Welcome to the Lebanon Lebanon podcast, highlighting all the great things happening in Lebanon, Indiana. Have an idea for an episode? Send an email to lebanlebanon at lebanon.in.gov. Hey everybody, and welcome to this episode of the Lebanon Lebanon podcast. Boy, we are getting closer and closer to 200 episodes. Can you believe it? Our podcast has lasted this long. We appreciate you being along for the journey I'm Joe LePage. I'm the Communications and Community Development Director for the City of Lebanon. So much growth is happening throughout our community, and we have one of the characters, one of the the cast members of this this great expansion story, expanding his business. We've got Shane Connor. He is the president of ATEC, Electrical Contractors, joining us here on the podcast. Shane, appreciate you being here. Uh, Thank you very much for having me. And when we were trying to schedule a time to get together to have you behind the microphone, you're a busy man. There, there's a lot going on. There are a lot of balls in the air that you're juggling. Appreciate you taking the time. Well, I appreciate that. And yes, things are very busy out there today. If you ever go on I-65 and you kind of see some work being done there, but that's ATEC. That's you guys, and you guys are expanding at the former Bottoms Up location, expanding your operation. That's fantastic news. Congrats. Uh, yes, sir. We have been growing significantly here in the last decade. Um, actually, a few years ago, we were the third fastest growing company in the state of Indiana, uh, I don't know where we're going to end up this year, but you know we're, we're having a very good year in 2024 as well. So what's what's the secret? What's what's going on with your operation? And everybody, ATEC is an acronym: Advanced Technologies in Electrical and Communications Incorporated. So that's the, the formal name, and it rolls off the tongue when you say ATEC. It's a little bit easier to say, but it's it's a lot. It's a big field, and you guys are are standing out in that field and and doing a great job at it. I'm guessing there's there's fantastic reasons why you've been so successful. Because I work hard. <laughs> it's that easy. There's no secret sauce. That was the next question. What, what's the what's the magic? What's the so hard work, determination, all those those old adages, that type of thing? Uh, oh, absolutely. That's you know that's I don't consider myself a smart man. The one thing I can do is put in the hours, um, and I really love my job. I have great employees, which you know they're the reason why ATEC is growing. I just get to sit in the office and direct traffic, but. I have some of the best electricians in the state of Indiana, and uh, you know they're doing a great job out there. Our customers, we have some really good customers, and um, you know they're helping us grow our business as well because they have a lot of positive things to say, and you know they'll share our information with their next door neighbor over there at the business park or in Indianapolis, and we're just growing leaps and bounds. Absolutely, I know for for me and my family, when when we moved to Lebanon. On the the building where you're currently renovating in a major way, there was like a big uh, it was a big steer on the side or something along those lines that signified that the bottoms up location. I know you went there a lot uh, during the. I'm just kidding. Yeah, I was going to say. <laughs> Everybody, this is that I never once. <laughs> <laughs> the look on Shane's face, hilarious. But the why that location? And I'm guessing there were some um, fun discoveries when you went into the the bottoms up building. It would neither one of us, ha- everybody, neither one, Shane or I, maybe you have uh, ventured inside the bottoms up location for any reason. But you hear a lot of stories uh, being around the Lebanon area. You hear a lot of stories about bottoms up things that went down inside and the the condition of the building and all those things. What did you hear going into it? And then what did you think when you opened up the door for the first time? Well, to say I never stepped foot in there is false because I didn't step in there as a patron. Um, They did call me when uh, the gentleman that I purchased it from purchased the building. They did call the company out, and I went and looked at some electrical work for them. But there were a lot of interesting finds in that uh, facility. Uh, (laughs) Any legal ones you can share? (laughs) Where the... uh, All the liquor was still there. The the beer cooler was completely full. And they had vending machines in there that still had stuff in them. But, you know, the most interesting find that we found when we were ripping out, it had an apron of concrete around it. And when they were lifting that up, I believe it was in April of 23, 
there were thousands of snakes underneath that concrete basking, you know, with the concrete warming them up underneath there. Thousands of them. I mean, so much so that the guy that was on the mini excavator did not want to get off of the mini excavator. So this was like an Indiana Jones situation. The you know, it, it was really cool. to have to be snakes. Yeah. Oh no! It was like the ground was actually moving. No. How do you feel about sna- snakes? I mean, this isn't uh, on our our pre-recorded list of questions, but I, I get antsy. I'm not as I'm not a snake person. I'm, I'm I can deal with other stuff. I can't deal with snakes. I like to look at them. I don't like to be close to them. <laughs> what? How do you go about getting rid of those suckers? And, and kind of what did you see behind kind of what the building was and to what you're making it into? Because everybody, if you look at it, I mean, it is, it's going to be a state-of-the-art, awesome place to call home for A-Tech. Yeah, that's correct. Yeah, we um, did talk to you about the snakes. You know, we didn't do anything. We did not harm any snakes. Um, actually, when we lifted that up, we left, left it alone. Uh, just because there were a lot of snakes in there that we had never seen before or a couple of us had never seen before. And then, you know, we actually did call DNR just to see. And um, there was no harm, no foul there. So, But but by the time we got back the next day, they were all gone because it was starting to cool off. So they, you know, they either went to the flying J or in the end they went (laughs) elsewhere. And I don't miss them. (laughs) They're not with you anymore. That's that's, that's correct. That's, I, I never knew that. I never heard that. This is this is breaking news to me, buddy. This yeah. is uh, yeah. But we it was a complete gut of the building. I can imagine. You know, the floors were rotting out in it. Uh, there was actually water in the you know in the foundation of everything. So uh, we gutted all the wood out and uh, put new floor joist in and you know built it from the ground up. What was it about this location? Was it purely logistics where it's right by 65, you can jump on and go? Or what was it about the building where you look past the snakes and the foundation and all those other challenges to say, nope, full steam ahead, hard work, determination, let's go? Uh, well, the location, it is location, okay. location, yeah. location. Yeah. Um, it is a unique lot. Um, there was a lot of unique challenges. Um, but, you know, I the way I even found out about the building is I ran into one of his former co-workers. I heard her talking to somebody. Actually, she's asking for a job ap- application. I knew who she was from when um, I walked in there, you know, two or three years prior to that. And I asked her, hey, why aren't you working there anymore? Because I knew she was the manager. And she says, he shut down. So I said, do you know if he's selling the building? And it was this quick. And she said, oh, he'll have to sell the building. So she gave me his number. I reached out to the next day. We had a deal the following day. And I'm guessing you don't have too many deals in your line of work that, that go that quickly where it's bang, bang, boom, it's open, there we go, and, and you now have the keys. It was very quick. <laughs> it does not happen that often, I can tell you. <laughs> Everybody, we're talking with Shane Connor. He's the president of ATEC, Electrical Contractors. Major expansion, major growth here in our community here on the Love and Lebanon podcast. So we're seeing the, the the what you've created on this unique lot. You mentioned it. It is unique kind of the way it's laid out. What eventually will it be when you guys, I'm guessing there'll be a, a ribbon that will be cut one day. What's it going to be when it's all said and done? I don't want to call it our headquarters because okay. we uh, we still are going to maintain the facility off of uh, Ransdale Road. I'm actually looking to uh, open up another business there. Um, but, you know, that's where I'm going to have all my project managers, my estimators. I will be out of that office. I'll probably have offices in both buildings. But, you know, my engineers, estimators, project managers, project engineers, uh, admin will all be out of that office. And you talked about the growth of your operation and, and being able to, because one of my list of questions was, do you, are you expanding and, and leaving Ransdale? But no, that you've answered that very well. But just the overall growth, you're almost two decades in this on, on year 19. But the, the amount of, of major events that you guys have been working on, this, this is a, a Lebanon company, Super Bowls? check uh auto racing significantly involved in that and you're talking about maybe maybe some other sports as well how, how did you bid and, and get you know signed on to be able to do these major events year after year uh well it started when the hard super- work i'm guessing yeah, yeah. hard work yeah, yeah. yeah well that's my answer to everything yeah. but th- i got involved with the nfl when the super bowl was in indianapolis uh, they had this program called the emerging business program and it was for small businesses and so I applied, you had to do interviews in front of civic leaders and things like that. And they, it wasn't something that you just showed up. They, they were trying to teach you something, you know, it was for the small businesses about growth and whatnot. And actually the day that 
we got to showcase ourselves. They chose so many people to showcase um, their companies. And I was actually right next to Shoops out of Frankfurt. Oh, yeah. They were sitting right next to great me. Great operation up there. Yeah, they're great. Mm-hmm. And, they, and I believe they're still involved in some of the Super Bowls as well. But I had my coin changer on my table. I didn't have much because that was my first experience doing that. So I had a name placard on there. I had a coin changer uh, from my when I was a paper boy, the little things you get nickels, <laughs> dimes, and quarters out of. And then I had my Purdue hard hat on there. Uh, this gentleman walks up to me, grabs my coin changer, and goes, this is unique. Tell me about it. And I said, well, that reminds me of all the hard work that I've done all my life. And he's like, what do you mean by that? Well, we grew up in apartments um, in Indianapolis on the west side. I went to Ben Davis. Uh, that's when I was going to Ben Davis at the time. And I was 12 years old, and I wanted a paper route. Well, in the apartment complex that I had, it had like 12 people on the route at the time. Well, 12 people on a paper route that you make like a dime a day, (laughs) you know, I was making $4, maybe $6. So I grew that to one of the larger ones in the city of Indianapolis. And, uh, you know, I won a lot of awards. They took me to Kings Island, took me to Reds games and things like that because, you know, I I really grew that that route. I actually employed my friends. Uh, to help me deliver papers. That's how big I got. But So anyway, he grabs that changer and asked me about that. And I told him the story about the paper route and how I grew it. And, you know, I always enjoyed the paper route and I actually started employing my friends. And he's like, oh, that's really neat. And then I told him the story about me. And he, he reached out my hand and he says, I want to work with you. So um, I still work with the gentleman today. We're actually really good friends. Uh, he's the one that I, you know, we do all this stuff for the NFL. We go to London, Mexico. Uh, the international games, the Super Bowls, the NFL drafts, and I'm also working with them with the Formula One down there in Miami. Um, but it was just that day. He, he appreciates the fact that I like to work hard, and that's what started it all. Yeah, and everybody, if you go to the, the ATEC website and you can look at the bios, Shane, you can see you're on a, a sports field and a lot of other fun, cool backdrops. Those aren't uh, CG'd or green screened in. You're actually doing those things. Did you ever imagine from paper route – to where you are now, the the NFL, Formula One, all those things? Did you ever kind of in your wildest dream vision cast that many, many moons ago? Uh, not a chance. <laughs> <laughs> the pauses are what get me, buddy. This, this is good. I love it. <laughs> no, there wasn't a chance, you know, because when I was younger, I really didn't know what I wanted to do. I could tell you when I was in high school, I thought I was going to be a park ranger. Then I realized back then you could make 14500 as a park ranger. You know, and I really had no clue. I joined the military when I was out of high school. Then I ended up meeting my wife. We ended up having children. And I was, she was going to school during the day. She'd drop me off at work. I was working full time. She'd drop me off to work. She'd go to school. And then I'd get home and then I'd go to school. And I was in English 131 at IEPY. And uh, I had to do a compare and contrast paper. And I had a friend that was in the apprenticeship program, um, the Electrical Training Institute. And I, so I immediately said, well, I'm going to do an apprenticeship versus going to college. So after I finished that paper, I quit college and got into the apprenticeship. Do <laughs> <laughs> you remember the, the, the class? you remember the course? you remember the, the assignment that kind of pivoted uh, your, your life? So you guys, you guys meet, you're, you're, go to Ben Davis. You said you, you also spent some time on the northwest side of Pike. How do you end up here in Boone County and sitting where you're sitting right now here in Lebanon with me? I was forced. <laughs> My wife is from Thorntown, and uh, I said, and she, she drove me through Thorntown one day, and this was years ago, and, you know, I just have to say I live in Thorntown now, and I love it, but the first time I drove through Thorntown, you being said- from Indianapolis, I said, there's no way I'm living here. There's not even a Taco Bell here. I said, there's one right down the road. How about we move to Lebanon? And so we kind of, you know, you kind of give in to your wife, but... Again, she won, and I'm now in Thorntown. <laughs> That's so funny. I will never live in Thorntown. So where do you live, Shane? Yeah, I live in Thorntown. Yeah, uh, right. It's exactly the truth. The, the boss does it. The boss does it. But it, growing a business and having it here in Lebanon, when was it Was it the Taco Bell that really sold you on <laughs> Lebanon? <laughs> was it the proximity, the fact that you know, in between Thorntown and Indy is, is Lebanon, that type of thing? I mean, what kind of played into your mind to, to grow the business not quite two decades uh, here in in Lebanon. Well, you know, we moved here in 98, and and I just, I loved Lebanon. You know, when they say it's the friendly city, you know, some people might say not, but, you know, I know a lot of people here that are very friendly. So why I chose Lebanon is because of the proximity to Lafayette, Mm -hmm. 
You also have Kokomo and you have Indianapolis. You know, you got the, the Chrysler plant and you got some big stuff in Kokomo. Of course, you have Purdue University up there in uh, Lafayette. And then you have Indianapolis. So mm -hmm. it was a perfect location for me to, to start a business. You got bitten by the electricity, electrical bug uh, in college before transitioning out of college to, to jump right into the apprenticeship. What is it about kind of what you're doing? And if you don't mind breaking down some of the things that you guys do, again, ATEC is an acronym, everybody, Advanced Technologies and Electrical and Communications. What types of things are, are you doing that, that's, that is just one of those things that keeps you excited about going, coming to work and, and keeps the business growing at the rate it's going? Yeah, well, yeah, I will have to say I love my job. You know, I love the people that I work with. Like I told you, I, I have great employees. So it, it's really a joy to go to work. You know, I don't have many vices, but I do like to work. And I work seven days a week, and I work at least 60 hours a week. But it's not work to me. I, I am truly having fun. You know, I, I feel like I'm making a difference. You know, it's just something that I truly enjoy. It's something that is always changing. Every day is a new adventure. You know, we're always looking for new customers and the existing customers we have since technology changes at every second, you know, we're always staying busy that way. But I mean, I named a tech because I didn't want to name it Connor Electric because I did want it to be bigger than my last name. I wanted it to be bigger than me, mm -hmm. you know, because I am the president. I am the one that founded it. Um, however, I knew one day I wanted employees and I didn't want this to be about me. I wanted it to be about them. You know, I tell everybody we're a, a customer focused employee driven company, you know, without the customers, without the employees, it's just me. And that's a lonely world to be in. <laughs> so, um, I started in the trade in 1997 as an electrical apprentice. If you would ask me then if I wanted to own my own company, I, I wouldn't have been able to answer you. But I just fell in love with the work in general. You know, it's a five-year program. You get 8,000 hours of on-the-job training. You get a degree from Ivy Tech, actually, when you're done with it. And I just loved every day of going to work. And, you know, they limited me. So they, they said, hey, you're going to work from 7 to 3.30. Well, then I, I didn't enjoy that so much. So you have enough friends that need a ceiling fan installed <laughs> or a receptacle at it. So I started doing that a little bit for people. And... It just kept growing and growing. And one of the guys I was in the military with and in the, my training class, we decided to start a company and we had to come up with a name. You know, his name was Mark. My name was Shane. So we said Shark Electric. And then we're like, no, nah, that's kind of goofy. Yeah. And, you know, the advanced technologies and electrical and communications came up and he goes, hey, write that down 10 times. So I did that. And that's how we came up with the acronym ATEC. Okay. <laughs> And, but it, it's anything electrical, like lighting, but it also like with the, the, the Super Bowl when it comes to that, I mean, it's the, the communication side as well. You become multi-pronged. What was it about just the, the problem solving, the you need this done and I think I can, I can help you reach your, your goal and be able to have, like you talked about, the great people to help you do that. I'm guessing that that comes with your desire to, to just work hard and, and be well-rounded, to be able to solve problems that people have and be able to, to help them succeed in, in whatever avenue they're going down. Yeah. And that's why I really like the trade. We I have bet. high voltage. We have low voltage. I mean, we have no volt. I mean, you have fiber optics mm -hmm. that, you know, transports on glass, and then you have 13, two up there on our power line. So that's what I enjoy so much about the trade because there's many different things you can do within it, in this trade. And I just didn't want to do electrical. You know, a lot of companies don't do the low voltage or communications part. You know, we have, there's separate low voltage companies out there and you've got separate high voltage companies out there. I was trained in both. So I said, this is a great opportunity for me to do my thing. And that's actually how I, the NFL, when I started doing that work, you know, they, that's what they really liked. I, I knew the high voltage side and I knew the low voltage side. And, uh, but I do have to tell you, you know, the, the Super Bowl was in Indianapolis. That was my first one. The second one was in New Orleans when the lights went out. That I was, had nothing to do with that. <laughs> I was going to say that it was, was all next... phone lines, TVs, and things like that. So, so. so if you're a 49ers fan, or you know, the lights go out there, and that's when the, the Ravens won, I think, beating San Francisco, the Har Bowl, as they called it. Not on you. Don't, don't direct your hate mail to, to Shane, everybody. That's yeah. not on you. That's correct. <laughs> <laughs> any, any interactions, though, I've got to ask about and be a fanboy. Any interactions with. NFL players or dignitaries, Roger Goodell, give you a high five, stuff like that. I mean, anything along those lines during your, your time? Yes. Close that, proximity? Yeah. Um, one of the neatest things I think I've ever done was I got to buy Joe Montana breakfast in Indianapolis. 
Yeah, we were at, oh, it was right. um, Acapulco Joe's there off of Illinois. It's no longer there. Um, they have a great, they had a great spicy biscuits and gravy. And that's why he was there. And uh, the weird thing about it was, is my good friend and my longest employee said, man, wouldn't it be cool if Joe Montana walked in? And I kid you not, it wasn't 10 seconds later. No he walks way. in with his bodyguard, sits down behind us. And I think that was one of the coolest things. But I've met Shannon Sharp. Yeah, we've met a lot of people. I'm not a starstruck type yeah. of person because, you know, I realize they're out there just doing their thing. But the one thing that we I do know that I share with most of those athletes is their dedication to their craft. And, you know, I, I watch them. It's I tell everybody when I watch the F1 race and I watch those teams, teams Mercedes, teams Ferrari, how exact they are, how trained they are, and how tuned to what they're doing, that's the type of owner I want to be, you know. And I think that's where my success has been is just that I have a passion for it, and I'm doing everything possible by learning. I'm doing everything possible by finding the right customers, and I'm doing everything impossible to find the right employees. Truth be told, full transparency, I was a little worried you were going to – I don't know Taco Bell didn't have breakfast at the time probably that you're <laughs> going to buy Joe Montana Taco Bell breakfast. I'm glad it wasn't, and now I kind of want those uh, spicy B's and G's here. Everybody, we're talking with Shane Connor. He's the president of ATEC, Electrical Contractors, expand and continue to grow the operation here in Lebanon. Talk about all these these great things and, and the, the kind of life uh, philosophies that you carry in kind of coordinating our schedules. You had to work around your coaching schedule as well. Oh, by the, oh, by the way, you work 60 hours, you work seven days, but, but in your spare time, the, those, the, the extra time to keep yourself busy, you're coaching athletics. I'm, I'm, how much correlation goes with you managing employees and, and kind of their personalities, their skill sets to the soccer pitch or whatever sport you're coaching? to be able to, to kind of harness those same abilities and, and being able to be their coach on the job or on the field? Uh, well, I can tell you, I, I really enjoy coaching the kids, you know, especially at the, um, the Weibo soccer team over there, the high school level. I really enjoy them. You know, when it comes to employees versus players on a team, two totally different things. But in the end, I think where I excel at that is because I have a very positive attitude. You know, I don't let things get in the way of being positive towards people. You know, I try to, I'm the type of leader that doesn't like to push people to get something. I want them to follow me, to, to walk behind me, to go get something done. So, you know, and that's like what is on the soccer team, you know, if they put in the effort, they're going to see me put in the effort. And that, I think that's a big thing. But to me, it's all about the positive attitude. It's all about going forward and it's all about doing your best doing the best when you can do your best mm -hmm. and i'm guessing that that portion kind of works with the employees too they, they see you coming to to work air quotes everybody making air quotes the the fact that you enjoy your job so much that you're leading by example and they're kind of following your lead that your dedication your work ethic is is something to get behind and, and really help not only grow that industry but want to be a player on your team in the, the corporate world and I hope that's the case yeah. because I truly care about them. You know, I have to get to work before them. I leave work after them because I feel I'm there to help take care of them. And I don't mean take care of them in any kind of um, financial yeah, way because yeah, yeah. they're making their own money. But I'm working hard for them. I want them to be better people just like I want to be a better person. You know, everybody keeps asking me when I'm going to stop. Why do I keep want to keep doing what I'm doing? I'll stop when I felt like I've accomplished helping as many people as I can. Yeah. If I, if I can, kind of your involvement also with the Boone County Economic Development Corporation, seeing growth as a business, our, our city is, is in, in, in a growth model right now. We're on the, the spoke on the wheel around the, the Circle City. We're on the northwest side as Whitestown's growing. We're kind of that ripple effect right up through Boone County, and we're experiencing that now. Kind of the, 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 the growing pains that, that come with it. I'm guessing you experienced similar ones in, in your professional life and growing a business and things. Any perspective you can pass along as, as the, the growth is happening around our community? Any any similarities with business growth and being able to measure that and, and have, be successful along the way? Yeah, well, I think, you know, I know it's a very, it's one of those subjects around here that is either positive or negative. Mm -hmm. You know, and with that being said, the way I look at it is, you know, in nature, if, once you quit growing, you start dying, you know, and I just think growth is so important, you know, not only growth as a community, growth as an individual, because that's, that's what we're here to do. We're supposed to be better, you know, and when you're being better, you're doing things. And when you're doing things, you're doing things for people. And the more you can do for people, the more they can do for other people. So growth is going to happen. 
Now, in, you know, around the community and everything like that, there are a lot of exciting things going on around here, and I'm, I'm very glad to be a part of it. Now, I know there's a lot of people that never wanted to see Lebanon change, but my philosophy is this isn't really about my thoughts, but this is more about for my kids and my grandkids mm. because these are great jobs around here that we're bringing in um, or somebody else is bringing yeah, in. Yeah. Um, but I'm very excited about it, you know, and with that being said, you know, I plan on being here for the rest of my life um, because I really enjoy this community. And because uh, your wife said so. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, because my wife said so. So you catch on quick. <laughs> um, must be married. But anyway, um, no, I'm very excited to watch the growth go on. When I drive up 65, I look, and it's, you know, it's sad to see um, farm fields and all that um, being tore up for a building, but mm. I understand it. I understand the concept behind it. Actually, one of my employees that works with me that I've known for years now, one of his homes was um, one of the houses that were bought by Lily. And so we, we have conversations about it. And sometimes he's not the happiest person in the world because he thought he had his home. But, you know, I think in the end, I think once it's all said and done and people see what Lily is bringing to the community, because I, I was reading or talking to somebody about, you know, for every employee that Lily hires, it creates three other jobs within the community. So to me, that that's what it's about to me. It's not about anything negative in my mind. Yes, it's affecting people, but it's about the, what is positive coming out. I'm get, trying to go back to that positive yeah, part no, of me, yeah. but there are a lot of positive things coming out of this. And, you know, my grandkids are going to benefit from this. And, you know, that's what I'm excited about, to watch the technology and watch Eli Lilly is a huge corporation and they're the best at what they do. You know, we're doing some work for them, doing some solar work for them downtown and just the way they handle safety and the way they do things, you know, that they put us to check, you know, so it's, I enjoy working with them. I have p friends that work for them and I know they're just a great company to be in, in Lebanon. And I think you bring up a great point too. It's the legacy portion of it. And that, that that's one of the things that, that doesn't easily kind of come. It's not on the, the front burner it is maybe not right now. We're in the growing pains where there's a lot of dust flying around. There are some moving parts. Pe people are, are sadly that that home that they wanted to live in forever, forever becomes a shorter amount of time, but the legacy stuff are generations from now benefiting from that. And that, that's such a unique perspective. And I, I, it's, it's one I hadn't heard a whole lot during this process. And so that, that your, your way of thinking there, I think is, is dead on. And if we can kind of the final lap here, uh, the final question, if I can get you out the door with this, Shane, is kind of what you don't seem like you're showing any signs of slowing down. What What's kind of next as you guys are, are looking at uh, revitalizing the, the snake infested bottoms up location into a, a state of the art awesome place right along I-65? I'm surprised you didn't keep the mural, by the way. I'm just kidding. <laughs> but what, what's what's next? What's your growth model look like uh, after this? Have you looked that far ahead or kind of looking what, what the next thing might be? You know, my kids sometimes ask me that, and I, I tell them I can't answer that question because I'm always chasing the person I want to be tomorrow. So, you know, with that being said, I'm sure one day there's going to be a day when I said, my body's aching, I don't want to do this, but... I'm only 52 years old. I don't even want to think about that. You know, I look forward to the next 20, 30 years with this company. So I, I don't plan on slowing down. I do plan on growing, but I plan on growing smart and I plan on growing it with my existing customers and I plan on growing it with the new businesses that will be coming to Lebanon. And we just don't focus on Lebanon. We're all yeah. over the oh, state. Yeah. We have, we got people out of the, um, out of the state right now. Um, and doing work for one of the local businesses here in Lebanon, but I don't see myself slowing down. I'm enjoying it too much right now. Um, I have great support from my wife. I have great support from my kids. Uh, I actually have one junior. Uh, he's a senior now. I have one senior left in school. So once he graduates, you know, and, and kids are my passion. I love my kids. So what else am I going to do? You know, <laughs> so I might as well go to work. And so I'm excited to see what tomorrow brings, but I'm very excited to see what the next year brings. And everybody in the body of this uh, podcast episode, I'll put the, a link to the, the ATEC website. You got to look through and see all the, the cool things that they do. You guys are, are so, wear so many hats and be able to, to fill so many needs within our community. But, but thanks for staying here in Lebanon and thanks for continuing to grow here and employ some great people and, and do great things. Well, I appreciate that. Thank you for having me. Yeah, and hope this isn't the last time. I know this was, was the first and, and hopefully not the last. Everybody, thank you so much for listening to this episode of the Love and Lebanon podcast. More episodes are coming your way. Take care.